ओके स्टूडेंट नेक्स्ट टॉपिक ऑन विच आई एम गोइंग टू डिलीवर द वॉइस नोट और माई लेक्चर दैट इज़ रिलेटिंग विद द इन्ज़ाइम ऑल इफ़ यू नो दैट वॉट आर इन्ज़ाइम सो बिफोर डिफाइनिंग द टर्म इन्ज़ाइम इट इज़ नेसेसरी दैट वी मस्ट नो अबाउट द कैटलिस्ट एंड ऑल इफ़ यू नो दैट द कैटलिस्ट आर द एजेंट्स विच इन माइन्यूट अमाउंट इनक्रीजेज द वेलासिटी ऑफ एनी केमिकल रिएक्शन of the uh, substances and they itself uh, increase the velocity by itself being without destroying themselves or altered upon completion of the reaction enzymes are the biological catalyst in that they catalyze the chemical reaction of the biological systems enzymes are produced by living cells and set of enzymes in each cell is genetically determined keep remember that these are the set of uh, chemicals in the living systems and the set of enzymes are genetically determined we uh, these are not going to synthesize in the means uh, they are genetically defined their presence is genetically defined and some of the enzymes are genetically deficient some people are genetically deficient. for example we say that uh, the uh, the person is lactose intolerant because uh, the enzyme lactase is absent genetically so the person may suffer due to migraine and uh, it, it is unable to digest the uh, lactose components which are taken uh, in the form of meal for example milk and dairy products uh, so he and she is unable to uh, metabolize them and um, so, uh, so it, that will create trouble trouble if enzymes are absent so there is a genetical codes which are available and they are responsible to synthesize a particular type of enzyme in the particular organ the words in uh, the word enzyme is basically came from the greek uh, term uh, the meaning is in ferment in means in and zyme means ferment <coughs> and was used when the catalytic property of yeast were discovered the substance there are certain substance on which an enzyme act that is called substrate the enzymes are highly effective catalyst and can bring the chemical reaction in the body or even in vitro at comparatively low temperature and low dilution so uh, it is clear that enzyme can help in completion of reaction although that reaction can proceed in the absence of enzyme but at the slower rate but if the enzymes are present uh, in the body or as well as in vitro the low temperature and low dilutions can help uh, not help but uh, these conditions can um minimize the so what i say that the enzymes are highly effective catalyst and can bring about the chemical reaction in the body as well as in vitro at comparatively low temperature and low dilution so it is understood that enzyme only accelerate the rate of chemical reaction but they are not initiating them keep remember they are not initiating them but they accelerating at the lower temperature and and at the lower requirement of other components and if the enzymes are absent then reaction can occur but a high temperature sometime and some other uh, factors are required to uh at the maximum quantity and uh, energy is required at the maximum quantity to occur the reaction and to fulfill and to complete the reaction now come to the mechanism of enzyme reactions uh 
the first enzyme catalyze 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 reaction mechanism is involved is the formation of enzyme substrate complex the three dimensional structure of enzyme which is abbreviated as e it is basically three dimension structure is basically permitting them to recognize a specific type of substrate which is represented by s so um, when the specific substrate is achieved or <coughs> uh, identified by the enzyme then enzyme plus substrate will combine together to form an enzyme substrate complex this reaction or um, this particular component which is synthesized it is a rever reversible reaction for example uh, why i am saying reversible because enzyme substrate if not going to proceed uh, towards the end product then it can back to again release the enzyme as well as the substrate so once the enzyme substrate complex is synthesized which is represented at es the linkage between the enzyme and the substrate occur at three different places and these are the places which are available in the enzyme so um, here you will learn that what is induced fit model and what is lock and key phenomena of the enzyme so this process by which they uh, join with the substrate and can make a complex that is called lock and key phenomena i said that there are three places where the uh, substrate can bind in the enzyme and that binding may be weak or maybe a strong covalent bonding the enzyme or the place over the enzyme where the substrate bind is called the substrate site or we can also term it as a catalytic site and the third word which uh, a third term which we can use is the active site of the enzyme where the substrate bind the catalytic site can be considered to function or help to trap the substrate molecule or it has high affinity for a particular substrate not all the molecule can bind with all type of uh, enzymes but there are certain specific substrate uh, that can bind at the particular site so once they bind the enzyme substrate complex are synthesized so these uh, molecule uh, has high affinity or great specificity in the term to bind with the particular type of um, enzyme or at the site so that will help you to understand the lock and key theory of the enzyme action that a particular substrate complex enzyme substrate complex is synthesized once a particular lock and key phenomena is completed once the substrate molecule bound it will induce a conformational changes in the enzyme this is true that not only the conformational changes occur in the enzyme the opposite is also true for example enzyme can produce conformational changes in their substrate so this this is a flexible phenomena uh, which undergoes uh, once the combination of substrate will occur with the enzyme so this conformational changes uh, once they catalyze uh, this flexibility of the catalytic side and the conformation changes undergo by the combination with the substrate is uh, the basis of what is presently the accepted mechanism of the enzyme action and this 
this phenomena is termed as induced fit model induced fit model i am describing one more time that once the enzyme substrate will combine together they will produce conformational ch changes both of them either enzyme or either substrate both is possible both are possibilities that either enzyme or the substrate can produce conformational changes and this is the accepted mechanism of the enzyme action and this accepted mechanism is called induced fit model of the catalytic side these uh, chemical groups are exposed to the exterior of the enzyme molecule due to the characteristics uh, folding of the polypeptide chain and its three dimensional tertiary structure so uh, this is about the first mechanism of enzyme reaction that is formation of uh, enzyme and substrate complex once the enzyme and substrate complex are synthesized i see it that once it is synthesized it might be possible it is a reversible reaction means enzyme es i am using the term es that is enzyme and substrate it can uh, be reversed to uh, liberate the enzyme and substrate from their induced fit model but once it is synthesized the second mechanism is the conversion of substrate into its product once the induced fit model is achieved which is the mechanism of uh, action of the enzyme to produce conformational changes either the substrate is producing in the enzyme or either enzyme is producing in the substrate so es is then in the second step converted into ep ep is stand for enzymatic product so that enzymatic product once synthesized it is irreversibly um, it means it cannot reverse <coughs> it is ir ir irreversible means ep your product to synthesize we that is irreversible the third mechanism or um, third reaction which is occurring in the mechanism is the release of the product from the enzyme means ep which is synthesized product which is synthesized it cannot be in reverse to again into the substrate but enzyme can liberated from the uh, association of ep so at the end enzyme is released and the product is released well i can define it as that e plus s will synthesize es complex this es complex can reverse at the early stage or the at, at the initial stage but once conformational changes or induced fit model is take place in the enzymatic reaction then ep is synthesized this ep will further convert it into e or liberate enzyme and the product e plus p the enzyme uh, freed from the product can now act on an other molecule of the substrate which can fit in that particular enzyme uh, we can summarize that there are in certain reaction you will find that k1 and k2 is basically the uh, activity which is required for the enzyme substrate reaction one more important th uh, thing which uh, need to uh, understand that before a chemical reaction can take place the reactant must become activated keep remember that reactants for example the substrate which is going to be uh, synthesize a product it is necessary when once the um, enzyme and substance uh, will bind together they uh, become activated and reaches the transitional stage 
in which neither the substrate nor the product is free keep remember neither the substrate nor the product it's free the transition state is followed by the decay of the transitional state intermediate into the reaction product means uh, certain enzymes at uh, certain reactions certain components they must chemical reactions are taking place after a while means a certain time period is required for the completion of the uh, reaction so that is stage in between is stage in which a substrate is converted into the product that is the transitional state and once the transitional state is completed or the reaction is completed it will go toward the decline and the it is uh, from the intermediate it is converted into the uh, reaction product so there is certain energy of activation which is abbreviated as e a c t e a c t e dash a c t that is energy and a c t or act is indicating activation so the energy of activation which is defined as the minimum amount of energy which uh, can be calculated in calories per mole, uh, mole which is required to be supplied to the reactant in order to bring them to an activated complex or the transitional state activated complex we are going to transitional state hai. so uh, the complete reaction jo hai, that can be say that uh, energy is required and a reaction which take place a certain time period is required for the reaction the rate of reaction uh, we can say is inversely proportional to the energy of activation i said that energy of activation is required to bring them into the activated state or to bring them into the transitional state so that activation energy is inversely proportional why inversely proportional means uh, rate of reaction if we remove that energy and we put the enzyme the reaction can follow in the greater speed or in the faster speed uh, the e act is less the reaction will be faster in other word uh, in the laboratory if we are going to uh, complete a reaction if we are going to process a reaction or to adopt a reaction then heat ultraviolet lights and certain ordinary lights are uh, used for this purpose um, so uh, without these the reactions are not possible but this is not occurring in the human body but in, there are certain exception if you see that uh, uh, we are going to treat hyperbilirubinemia the phototherapy is required for the treatment and that phototherapy is basically the activation energy photo uh, energy uh, similarly formation of active form of vitamin d we require ultraviolet radiation these are the two exceptions otherwise in the human body uh, for the activation energies uh, these or for the activation of reaction these things are not available but in the body the enzymes are available which can activate so the energy activation will be minimized so what enzyme will do they stabilize the transitional state and greatly decrease the activation energy i will give you an example over there so that you can better understand uh, a reaction which we have already discussed in lipid metabolism that is peroxide hydrogen peroxide that is 2h2o2 this 2h2o2 will be uh, what it will do it will be detoxified 
and deoxidize to liberate two molecule of water and one molecule of oxygen this reaction is occurring in the body in the absence of enzyme if if in the absence of enzyme then the activation energy which is required to bring them into the transitional or activated state uh, which i discussed earlier so 1800 calories per mole is the energy which is needed to catalyze this reaction and there is no any catalyst okay i'm i'm using the term catalyze but not use the term catalyze but if there is no any catalyst 1800 calories per molecule or per mole is required but if platinum is used as an catalyst which we have already discussed that uh, and i will discuss later that what are the chemical nature of enzyme uh, because certain cofactor and coenzymes these are organic and some are inorganic some are the cofactors so if we use a platinum that is basically the catalyst so that will reduce the e activation and it will comes down to 1100 calories per mole so just by addition a catalyst that is the platinum the energy which is required for the completion of a reaction means uh, once the chemical reaction is started it will come into the transitional state and to uh, means to produce the induced fit model reaction to produce uh, the end product it will be remain for certain period of time in the transitional state and once the reaction is completed definitely the energy is required so once the reaction is completed the end product is synthesized and i say that if hydrogen peroxide is uh, converted without any catalyst 1800 calories are required and if we use platinum as a catalyst then this energy is reduced and only 1100 cal calories per mole are required but now if we add the catalase enzyme that is the enzyme platinum was the factor cofactor not the exactly catalyst but if we add the enzyme catalase it further reduce down uh, the energy that is required as an enzyme activation or energy activation which is required for the activation of reaction is lower or less than 2000 calories per mole enzymes are capable of increasing the reaction rate uh, 10 to uh, means 10 ratio to the power uh, 3 to 10 ratio to the power 14 means itna high kar dete hain fast kar dete hain uh, reactions ko in journals they act on 100 to 1000 substrate molecules within seconds now come to chemical nature of enzyme with the few exception for example certain rna molecule enzymes are either pro pure proteins or contain protein as an essential component along with that certain non-protein molecule which i have already discussed uh, in the reaction that we can also use a platinum which is a non-protein so uh, non-protein can also participate in the reaction so what i said that enzymes are protein in nature and in certain cases there is a non-protein molecule such as metal ions which are also essential for their activity protein component are termed as apoenzyme 
और प्रोटीन कंपोनेंट अगर सिर्फ प्रोटीन होगी तो देन वी कॉल द एंजाइम एज एपो एंजाइम वाइल नॉन प्रोटीन कंपोनेंट आर टर्म्ड एज प्रोस्थेटिक ग्रुप और को फैक्टर और को एंजाइम सो दिस इज द टर्म व्हिच वी यूज फॉर द नॉन प्रोटीन कंपोनेंट्स इन द एंजाइम not all the enzyme containing these prostatic group but certain containing we can also use uh, the term prostatic for the prostatic group as cofactor and coenzyme the apoenzyme that is the protein and the non protein part prostatic group they together constitute a whole or a complete enzyme with term as hollow enzyme h o l o hollow enzyme in order to remain catalytically active the primary secondary and tertiary structures of the enzymatic protein must remain intact some enzymatic proteins are modified covalently by the process such as phosphorylation dephosphorylation glycosylation now come to non protein component uh, needed for the enzyme activity which includes different b vitamin complexes i say that they majority not majority but almost all the vitamin b and certain metallic ions are acting as a non protein prostatic group they enhance the activity or they enhance the uh, reaction velocity towards the forward direction or to complete the uh, completely synthesize the end product now come to cofactors cofactors uh, non protein ki hum baat kar rahe hain to non proteins uh, enzymatic uh, jo component hain they can be cofactor and coenzyme now what are cofactor and coenzyme cofactors are basically the inorganic ion for example copper for uh, copper ferrous hai ferric hai uh, these coenzymes i'm giving you the example of copper that copper cytochrome oxidase system uh, may present hota hai similarly potassium magnesium hexokinase hexokinase require magnesium as a uh, cofactor so this enzyme can be completed by addition with the uh, coenzyme or cofactor similarly nickel that is required for the urease and zinc now come to coenzyme these are either organic or metallo organic molecule they act as transient transporter of a specific group they are not only accelerating but they are basically uh, the coenzymes not the cofactor coenzymes that they are giving certain uh, transporters or the specific group cofactor and coenzymes loosely bound with the enzyme protein or may be tightly bound or covalently bound to the enzymatic protein once they are loosely bound they can easily dissociate from the enzymatic protein these cofactor and coenzymes that are tightly bound with the enzyme protein are designated as prostatic group for example a metal ion occurring as a prostatic group include copper magnesium manganese zinc similarly uh, vitamin b12 they are also acting as a prostatic group <clears throat> so here uh, i have discussed about the introduction 
about the introduction of enzyme for example we have discussed the different uh, possibilities about the enzyme that how uh, what is the mechanism what is the definition first we have discussed about the definition and then we discuss about the mechanism of reaction uh, which is occurring with the help of enzyme and in this relation we have discussed about the lock and key phenomena that is a three dimensional structure and it uh, is specific for a particular type of substrate and once it is uh, recognized by the substrate to uh, fit into particular or lock into that particular key of the enzyme so the conformational changes will take place and we use the term induce fit model this uh, accepted mechanism uh, this is the accepted mechanism of the enzyme action and once induced fit model will produce the conformational changes at uh, the enzyme product will synthesize but before that it will come into the transitional state this transitional state required the energy for the activation of the reaction and this activation energy uh, for the reaction can take place means the reaction can take place without the enzyme but it will require a high energy and it will take a longer duration of time uh, or it will keep uh, the component or the complex for uh, the longer period of time into the transitional state but once the enzymes are available and they uh, the cofactors are available they can minimize the uh, energy of activation which is required for, the, for a particular reactions to occur and second important thing is that they can um, uh, these enzymes are capable to uh, act on the certain uh, means several time of substrate in the minute quantity or within the second the reaction can be completed with the help of enzyme along with that uh, chemical nature of the enzyme is discussed that <coughs> majority of these are uh, protein in nature and uh, some non-protein parts are also included in certain enzymes and once these non-protein parts are included they are termed as prosthetic group and uh, with the protein uh, part uh, we use the term apoenzyme and non-protein once bind with it then we say the complete enzyme which is a hollow enzyme and enzyme uh, will remain Will, means they will not lose their structure enzymatic protein are modified covalently but it can it can be intact but sometime it can modify covalently by certain process which i have told you that phosphorylation hai dephosphorylation hai that is basically uh, converting the enzyme uh, structure non protein component I said that which are present in the enzyme are cofactors and coenzyme cofactors are the uh, inorganic metals and coenzymes are the organic or metallo organic molecule both and they what they would do they uh, decrease the enzyme activation energy and they accelerate the reaction at the faster rate and the end product will synthesize and at the end they will be liberated and can be used by another substrate thank you so much in the next uh, topic in the next lecture i will discuss the uh, certain type of enzyme and their reactions too let's now come to the classification of enzyme we have discussed uh, introduction and i am resuming again uh, to the classification enzymes have been named in many different ways and in many cases their names end with the suffix as a s e as which is preceded by the name of substrate for example uh, sucrase lipase basically they are explaining uh, at which substrate they are going to act urease in other case their name describes uh, the action of the enzyme Uh, for example transmethylase oxidase uh, in other cases their name are uh, not pointing out their substrate or action for example uh, pepsin and trypsin some name indicate the source for example uh, pancreatic lipase 
and other indicate the distinctive feature of their actions for example serine protease in case of an enzyme showing multiple forms they are given the number or alphabet uh, for example rna polymerase 3 so uh, if the uh, the enzymes are of multiple type then their uh, number on they are in two three four five numbers so uh, they are given the alphabetical name alphabetical number or they must be indicated with the number monoamino oxidase a monoamino oxidase b cyclooxygenase 1 cyclooxygenase 2 all these are the example of those enzymes which are showing multiple forms and they are given number or alphabet some enzymes have uh, more than uh, one name for example the enzyme catalyzing the uh, reversible reaction for example uh, succinyl coa uh, is converted into succinic acid and, and gtp uh, so is called as succinate thiokinase as well as succinyl coa synthetase due to their reactions proceeded to the right and to the left respectively so uh, double reactions which are going forward and um, then moving back to for example succinyl coa is uh, in the presence of gtp and one phosphate is converted into succinic acid and then this is a reversible reaction to means succinic acid is also converted into succinyl coa so uh, the name of the enzyme is succinate thiokinase as well as succinyl coa synthetase so this is a complete procedure and complete uh, reactions which is proceeding one more thing which i would like to let you know about uh, the number of enzyme there are some specific number there is a complete commission which we i already told you that how the uh, enzymes are uh, how the things or how the bio biochemicals are classified there is a commission on enzyme 2 and this uh, commission appointed by the international union of biochemistry and molecular biology uh, which drafted a specific rule for the classification and nomenclature of enzyme and in this system which is called as ec system that is enzyme commission system each enzyme has been assigned a four digit classification number i am repeating that each enzyme has been assigned a four digit classification number along with a systemic name which indicates the reaction which it is going to catalyze along with the systemic name means a number is also given to the enzyme as well as a systemic name is also given to the enzyme so uh, this indicate the reaction going to catalyze the digit represent the class subclass and sub sub subclass for example if the enzyme is hexokinase which catalyze the reaction between uh, the glucose and atp and this will synthesize that is glucose in the presence of atp will synthesize glucose 6 phosphate and liberate one adp so um, it is uh, it is given the ec classification number as 2.7.1.1 its systematic name is atp d glucose 6 phosphotransferase ec nomenclature is uh, scientific and remove all ambiguities of the enzyme nomenclature of the enzyme known presently as well as the enzyme to be discovered in the future so um, according to the enzyme commission system there are six main classes of enzyme i said that these numbers are given according to the classification and these classification could be changed especially the number could be changed as the new, as the new discoveries are uh, involved and new discoveries will help you determine the new enzymes new nomenclature so according to enzyme commission system there are six classes these are the main classes and these classes 
are having further sub classes and sub classes having further sub sub classes according to the uh, ec classification which is considered as main class the first one uh, class is oxidoreductase second is transferases third is hydrolases fourth is lyases l y a s e s fifth is isomerases and sixth is ligases l i g a s e s now come to oxidoreductase that is the first class this is further subdivided into almost um, four subclasses and their subclasses including oxidases dehydrogenases hydroperoxidases and oxygenases these are the subclasses of oxidoreductases oxidoreductases are the enzyme which are also known as redox enzymes and they are uh, catalyzing the oxidation reduction reaction uh, which is basically the transfer of hydrogen and similar type of uh, thing which we have already discussed in etc and i say that their subgroups are uh, oxidases dehydrogenases hydroperoxidases and oxygenases if we talk about the first uh, oxidases oxidase as the name indicate oxygen is added to the uh, hydrogen atom removed from the substrate from h2o2 or h2o forming h2o and h2o2 so oxygen is added to hydrogen atom removed from the substrate and that will finally form either water or hydrogen peroxide dehydrogenases these enzyme catalyze either the removal of hydrogen from the substrate but are not able to use the oxygen as hydrogen acceptor uh, for example cytochromes which we have discussed in the uh, etc chain cytochromes b c1 and c uh, similarly NADH which is converted into NAD, FAD is it is converted into FADH2. So these are basically the dehydrogenases. Hydrogen peroxidases, these are again two enzymes in this class called peroxidase and catalase. This is not the sub sub class, but they are having two different types uh, which are <coughs> catalyzing the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide oxygenases these enzyme catalyze the incorporation of molecular oxygen into the substrate and the good example is phenyl alanine that is a component which is converted into tyrosine and what will happen oxygen oxygenase jo hai, uh, that is responsible to incorporate the molecular oxygen um, with the substrate and it will synthesize first water <coughs> cytochrome p450 system uh, these are the heme containing mono oxygenases these are again the oxygenases type of enzymes so what they will do that is an example of um, example of oxygenase cytochrome p450 system uh, these are heme containing i said mono oxygenase that either alone or in combination with cytochrome b5 bring detoxification of many drugs and chemicals which are entering in the body and these uh, uh, components are termed as xenobiotics and also take part in hydroxylation now come to the second big class that is uh, two class two transferases these enzymes bring about the transfer of functional group as their name indicate either phosphate amino acid acyl methyl from one molecule to an another molecule which is called donor and the acceptor molecule respectively transferases are further sub classified into uh, the class transaminases phosphotransferases transmethylase transpeptidase and uh, 
Trans, Acylase. These are the five subclasses. Um, Transaminase, as the name indicate, catalyzes the exchange of NH2 group between the amino acid and the keto group. Now, phosphotransferase. Phosphotransferase, that is kinase. These catalyze the transfer of phosphate group and also called kinases. <coughs> Transmethylase, as the name indicate, it is responsible for the transfer of methyl group. Transpeptidase, uh, it is responsible or catalyzing the transfer of amino acid or peptides. Amino acid and peptides. Transacylase, transfer responsible and catalyzing the transfer of acyl group. For example, uh, I will give you the example here over we have already discussed in the lipid that it acetyl-CoA plus choline when uh, react together to synthesize acetyl-choline uh, and CoA. So there the transfer of uh, acyl group occur uh, between the choline and the acetyl-CoA and to synthesize the acetyl-choline and CoA will be removed so this enzyme is involved here third class is hydrolase these enzyme catalyze the reaction of hydrolysis that is addition of water molecule to the substrates which is uh, simultaneously decomposed the third enzyme uh, the th third class having the further uh, subclasses and their further subclasses including protein hydrolyzing enzyme which are known as protease or proteinase and uh, we can use the term proteolytic enzymes the second um, type of hydro, uh, hydrolase enzyme or second subclass of hydrolase enzyme is carbohydrates third is lipid hydrolyzing enzyme fourth is deaminases and amino hydrolase fifth is D amidase and amido hydrolases and sixth one are the ester hydrolyzing enzyme which is also the subclass now come to uh, one by one protein hydrolyzing enzyme are including proteinase protease proteolytic enzymes uh, these enzymes are of two type further one are exopeptidase this is the sub subclass and second is the endopeptidase the first one that is exopeptidase catalyze hydrolysis of the terminal peptide bond while the endopeptidase attack the centrally located peptide bond exopeptidase are further subclassified into polypeptidase and there are two type amino pep amino polypeptidase and carboxypeptidase polypeptidase the second uh, sub subclass of exopeptidase is tripeptidase act on the tripeptides dipeptidase act on the dipeptide that is the third sub subclass now come to endopeptidase which act on the uh, where i have already told you that endopeptidase attack on the centrally located peptide bond so these include peps pepsin trypsin and chymotrypsin now the uh, second Subclass of hydrolase is carbohydrates. These catalyze the hydrolysis of glycosidic bond. Third is peptide uh, lipid hydrolyzing enzyme. These lipid hydrolyzing enzyme are further sub subclassified into lipase, cholesterol esterase, and phospholipase. I am not going into the detail of these as their name is already indicating their function. For example, lipase hai, definitely it is acting on the triglycerides or neutral fat and choline, 
Koli Israel Israel Hararize Koli Israel Easter Phospholipase act on the phospholipids and uh, lesser than <coughs> now the fourth subclass of hydrolase is D aminase and amino hydrolase these include adenosine guanase which catalyze the reaction of adenine and guanine while fifth one is D amidase and amido hydrolase catalyze the hydrolysis of amide and include urease arginine and uh, glutaminase and asparginase sixth class is the easter hydrolyzing enzyme which are further grouped into phospho uh, phosphatase and some other miscellaneous phospho phosphatase a great variety of phosphatase uh, which are found and they are uh, there are their sub sub classification can be phosphomonoesterase uh, phosphodiesterase phosphohydrolase pyrophosphatase nucleotidase nucleosidase so all these are the sub sub class of phosphatase while in miscellaneous easter hydrolyzing enzyme that that is the second subgroup of uh, easter hydrolyzing enzyme including choline esterase sulfatase now come to fifth uh, not fifth fourth fourth uh, big class of enzyme is lyase these enzyme catalyze the addition of nh3 water and carbon dioxide to double bond or the removal of these group leaving behind the double bond their main function is that they are either leaving double bond behind or they are maybe uh, generating the double bond uh, means uh, they are adding into adding up into the double bond fifth one is the isomerase the enzyme as the name indicate catalyze the structural change within the single molecule by transfer of the group within the group within the uh, substrate and resulting is the formation of an isomeric form of the substrate <coughs> for example we have already discussed cis and trans iso uh, isomeric forms so uh, these transfer of isomeric form from cis to trans and trans to cis will occur due to the isomerase and a particular substrate name is also given to the for example um, uh, phosphohexosis isomerase now come to six class six sub uh, main class is the ligase and these enzyme catalyze condensation reaction that is joining of the two molecule and forming carbon and oxygen link carbon and sulfur link carbon and nitrogen link carbon and carbon bond or link <clears throat> along with that they also release energy uh during this process so this is all about the uh, enzyme and their classification although this subject can cover uh, the with the example of different reactions but it will become more lengthy for you if i will talk about ligases enzyme for example acetyl coa in the presence of atp that will also reacted by acetyl coa carboxylase and it is converted into melonyl coa so it will be difficult for you to uh, memorize all these things uh, there are certain important properties of enzyme for example they are uh, specific in nature they are um, protein in nature as well as <clears throat> they are uh, the direction of enzyme reactions uh, pro enzymes zygo enzymes another important thing which is need to be that is repression of enzyme this is the terminology uh, you must know that it is the reverse of enzyme induction e coli make the enzyme tryptophan synthetase only when the medium in which they are grown does not contain tryptophan e coli make the enzyme tryptophan make the enzyme tryptophan synthetase only when the medium in which they are grown does not contain tryptophan when tryptophan is added to the medium the synthesis of this enzyme is stopped 
therefore this is said that the tryptophan has caused the repression of the enzyme tryptophan synthetase similarly insulin has been found to repress the enzyme participating in gluconeogenesis insulin is participating in uh, repression of the enzyme which is participating in gluconeogenesis come to the biochemical important and medical important of these enzyme that we are discussing that they are basically providing the diagnostic value of serum enzyme there is a diagnostic value of serum enzyme you must have seen some uh, medical report and uh, diagnostic reports which are uh, basically helping in which enzymes are activities also checked so they are used as a diagnostic tool for example uh, if we are going to alkaline phosphatase we are going to check the alkaline phosphatase enzyme the this drive from the two sources one is the bone and the other one is the liver it is raised in rickets and packet disease and osteoblastic sarcoma and obstructive jaundice so uh, majority of the enzymes which are uh, used as diagnostic uh, tool for to evaluate the disease and its severity by counting their number similarly sgot sgpt creatinine kinase that is cpk uh, that will cpk will raise in the disease of muscle and as well as in myocardial infarction that is related to the heart so uh, these are the specific uh, value uh, of the diagnostic enzymes that they are helping to identify the disease and the severity of the disease too special diagnostic testing uh, tests are also uh continued with by using the enzyme there are several uh, diagnostic tests that have been devised in which enzymes are used as uh, a special tool for example pcr test that is polymerase which which we are now a day is going to use it a pcr what is pcr this is a technique used dna polymerase along with it it it's a primer to obtain large amount of two strands of the dna basically pcr test is done to uh, take the two uh, strands of dna uh, from such a small amount of dna and can otherwise it cannot be analyzed this technique has been made to detect the source of dna uh, source of dna starting from a single cell hair follicle or spermatozoa similarly um, diagnostic of genetic disease before birth enzymes are used certain enzymes are used to determine such um, defects elisa that is enzyme linked immuno uh, sorbitant assay this is also the technique which is used to uh, diagnose and helping to diagnose Uh, different type of uh, problems medical problems certain enzymes are used as a medicine too and certain chemicals are used to act as enzyme inhibitory to uh, save the human life or to save the person from the disease many enzymes are useful and they can be used as a drug for example enzyme substitution in the digestive uh, distribution uh, disturbance if there is any digestive problem then uh, similarly in blood coagulation thrombin is used locally to stop the bleeding and hyaluronidase this is the enzyme hydrolyze mucopolysaccharides such as hyaluronic acid and chondroitin sulfate sulfate and this cause a losing of the deep layer of the skin if we talk about enzymes which we are using as in medicine 
similarly enzyme inhibitors are also used as a medicine i am giving you the simple example of captopril that is the name of the drug and this drug is used in hypertension and what it will do it is acting on an enzyme that is angiotensin converting enzyme ace and it is going to inhibit which is basically involving to generate hypertension so once this enzyme is inhibited what is the action of it it decreases the formation of angiotensin 2 and aldosterone which is retaining water as well as um, salt in the body and responsible for the hypertension so once captopril will inhibit or target that particular enzyme so this enzyme inhibition will help to achieve to lower down the effect that is uh, reduction of hypertension similarly aspirin you have heard this name several times you have maybe used this drug this medication several times it is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug used for uh, to control the inflammations arthritis fever and uh, any kind of pain so uh, this drug is basically acting on the enzyme cyclooxygenase 1 which uh, which is also known as cox 1 and cyclooxygenase 2 cox 2 i said that enzymes are uh, numbered into their subclasses although they are sub certain enzymes are having similar name they have similar activity but they are located at the several places or if they are in multiple in, in number at the multiple area so we can give them the number one and two similarly say acetylcholine um, not acetylcholine sorry acetyl salicylic acid uh, that inhibit the cox2 and due to the inhibition we can achieve the fever and uh, anti-inflammatory effect i can give you more example but it will be difficult for you this these these things are basically applied in pharmacology this is the applied form of biochemistry that uh, why enzymes are important that we have studied because we are going to use them for the diagnosis we are going to use them for the treatment of different type of diseases and we are going to use the different chemicals as an enzyme inhibitor because several type of disease can occur due to the overactivity of enzyme and similarly several type of disease can occur due to the deficiency of enzyme 2 for example uh, alkaptone urea it is caused by the deficiency of homogenetase 1 to dioxygenase that take part in tyroxine uh, sorry tyrosine degradation the urine has dark pigment <clears throat> similarly certain enzyme activators and inducers are also helping to control the disease in certain cases drugs are used to activate or induce certain enzyme an important example is the use of phenobarbitone in decreasing the raised unconjugated bilirubin level in the patient so uh, we can say that enzymes are very important uh, medicine as in medicine too they can be reduced in certain disease then we need activators certain enzyme are over, over activative so over activity can be suppressed by certain other disease which are termed as inhibitor so if you use the term uh, antagonist of the enzyme we can use this terminology too that they are uh, certain medications medications and medicines are antagonizing the effect of <clears throat> enzyme and uh, inhibiting the activity some are activating that they are acting as an inducer or agonist of the enzyme and i said that in certain uh, cases the deficiency of enzyme can also cause disease uh, for example uh, g6pd deficiency 
you heard this name and this uh, the deficiency of reduced glutathione in rbc make them susceptible to easily hemolyze uh, especially when certain drugs are taken for example anti malarial drugs are taken then this g6pg deficiency will uh, causing trouble and cause hemolysis similarly lactase deficiency that is absence of or complete deficiency of lactase uh, in the small intestine so it prevent the hydrolysis of lactose uh, to glucose and galactose the presence of lactose in the intestinal content cause its bacterial fermentation and the lactic acid so produce cause diarrhea and abdominal pain so lactose intolerance are mm, will develop due to the deficiency of lactase enzyme i think i, I have taken only all, all those uh, terminologies and all name of those enzymes which you heard maybe in your lifetime that the f- 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 sometime the small children is in small infants they are suffering due to lactose lactose intolerance this will happen when lactase enzyme is deficient and sometime the over activity or any git trouble can cause deficiency because this enzyme is present in the gi tract and this is responsible for the hydrolysis or for the metabolism another term is the term is the metabolism of the lactate lactose so lactose once this enzyme is absent maybe due to diarrhea due to abnormal uh, abdominal bowel movements and bowel habits so in that case lactose free formula of milk should be given to them S- moreover there are certain disease that can cause by excessive enzyme activities um i am not having a very uh, good example for this but uh, you can study that so uh, in a nutshell we can say that the enzymes are important in terms of um, disease development to control the disease they help to accelerate the reaction so certain excessive over uh, expression of enzyme can also cause disease their less expression can also cause or uh, responsible for indication of the disease so there are chemicals a uh, medicine which are synthesized by observing and analyzing the enzyme activity in the beginning i told you that enzymes are protein there are certain non protein enzymes too for example ribozyme uh contrary to the previous belief that all the enzymes are protein certain rna molecule have been shown to possess all the properties uh like the enzyme and are the true enzyme being rna in nature these these enzymes have been designated as ribozyme therefore rna molecule with catalytic activity for example a414 nucleotide containing rna form and rna molecule <coughs> and rna component of the ribosomal rna catalyze the peptide bond formation and its peptide transferase activity so here i have finished the complete um topic that is relating with the enzyme so we have discussed the introduction of enzyme we have discussed the classification we have discussed the uh, way to nomenclate them and there i i told you that there is a commission which is working <coughs> working on to that how uh, these enzymes are nomenclated i told you that there is sub cla- class a big class then there is sub class then sub sub class so uh, a specific number is given to the enzyme now it is uh, your uh, homework in other word that you need to uh, 
take that nomenclature and to find out their specific number which is given by the commission and this commission will review every year after every five year or after every one year and they can add and change the classification they can add or they can remove the particular class uh, or sub sub class from that particular class i also told you about the um, biomedical importance of uh, enzymes that they are involved in the diagnosis of certain diseases they are used as a tool for the diagnosis of the diseases similarly some of the enzyme over activity some of the low activity can help to treat certain type of illnesses and there are certain chemical that are either the inducer either the inhibitor of the enzyme that help to control the disease so um, we have finished all the topic which were assigned to me now i will give you an uh, assignment on another topic that i will upload on uh, your google classroom thank you so much class Thank <laughs> you.